Hey guys, it's 2.30 on November 4th, 2017, and I spent some time last night and today going over this channel here, Mental Boost, and what this person does uniquely and quite wisely is point out some of the anomalies of things that we're, we see in this California fire, and it's prompted me to do some research. So I'm going to share with you what this guy or girl has made in their videos and share some of the... Um, research that I've come across today. So let's start by looking at what this video has to offer here. Major fire around. In fact, we'll pull out to give you the wide look real quick, just to give you an idea of there's no wall of flame in here. There's nowhere, no flame anywhere near here right now that the fire, there's some back to the southeast, some smoldering, the big fire we've been covering back to the southwest. But uh, really, no open flames. You can just see how these winds picking up just that little bit of black brush there, maybe picking up an ember, getting into it. So this fire remains extremely dangerous, even when there's not an odd, a lot of open flame. You can see right down through the middle of that house, a complete loss, a very large mansion here, 6,900 block of Overlook Terrace in Anaheim Hills, fully involved with flame right now. Give you our viewpoint up here. This is uh, the 91 corridor. Okay, so the question is, there's two questions that arise in this video. Number one, assuming that these are terracotta. Okay, if it's not terracotta, we could explain it with some asbestos or something like that. But let's assume that these are terracotta. These are real roofs. What could make the terracotta itself burn? Usually, you know, you think about if these things, the terracotta tiles are cooked in kilns. They don't ignite in kilns. So what the hell is going on here? We have that, and we also have the fact that there is no flame around this this property. So this this property literally goes up without any flame coming around it. As we can see here, guys, there's no flame coming to burn this house. So what the hell is going on? Well, here's something that struck me as very unusual when I first started investigating these fires. And this says here that in across Northern California, 77 cell towers were destroyed or damaged, according to the Los Angeles Times. 77 cell towers were destroyed or damaged? Aren't these things made of metal? Why the hell would these things not work? Now this is worth our consideration because I've often thought and complained in other videos that one cell tower is sufficient to carry a signal up to 40 miles, so even further if there's no obstruction of hills or tower or buildings and stuff in the, man, in the thing. So the fact that we have so many cell towers around us is a big red flag. Now, here's what I've discovered this morning, and you guys pretty much know this too. I'm just going to show you what happens when you put metal in a microwave. Because this, and, and, and don't forget, those cell towers, what do they do? They emit microwave electricity. That's all they do, microwave energy. It that's, that's, doesn't matter what you guys think it's for, even if you think it's just for your little iPhone. That's what they do, and they generate a tremendous amount of microwave energy, and they are distributed all over your neighborhoods, and even attached to your house now, thanks to these smart meters. But let's see what happens with microwave energy and metal. We know this. We've seen this. This is nothing new, but I'm going to play it anyway. I want you to watch what happens here. And these guys turn on this microwave, and of course what we know is going to happen is the metal that's in the microwave starts igniting. And it sparks like crazy. It sparks like crazy. I want you to remember that because a lot of people were talking about the sparks that they saw in the air. Now the sparks are from the vibration of the metal. And as the metal is vibrating, it goes through oxidation reduction. And it's the oxid oxidation that, that offers the, the oxygen to, to make the flame that we see in this. Okay, this is very important. Now, if you manipulate the magnetic field, which is what you're doing when you microwave metal, you're also accelerating the oxidation reduction process, which means you're freeing up aluminum oxide in this instance. Okay, and aluminum oxide is an oxidation element that will ignite, that will that has provides oxygen in the combustion situation that would bypass the need for a furnace. Okay, and depending on what kind of metal you're microwaving, you're going to get different color sparks. Now, here's why this is important. Because what is a 
terracotta roof made of? This is very important. Terracotta has, where is it? Iron oxide. That's how they get their color. Iron oxide is contained in the terracotta. If you microwave it and you release this, this iron oxide, it suddenly has oxygen, an oxygen feed that it would otherwise need in a furnace to burn. It's, this is what's called um, combustion synthesis. Okay, Th this, is, this is really creepy, but this is how it works. You, you microwave things and you, you increase the release of oxides, which will, which will create a fuel of oxygen to burn the materials. This is a, it's called microwave assisted combustion synthesis, and you can do it with any kind of metal. Now, here's what's interesting is that you can't do this with trees because there's no metal in the tree to create the oxidizing agent that's going to burn. That so you have to have the oxidized agent to to fuel the fire. It's a self-sustaining fire. So um, I don't know. I'll put some links in the description. This is just a general overview of some of the stuff I've discovered today, but I just thought I'd share this with you because um, I, I don't, I really don't know how to simplify all this uh, research I've done, but um, I'm going to look in the comments from you guys and find out what else you need me to explain here because there's, there's tons of stuff. I'm going to go through more of this guy's video here. Oh, no, not him. Oh, let's see this, this guy right here. I'm going to go through more of his videos to bring you the explanations that I've come across because all of this is very, very easily explained with being zapped by microwaves. I mean, literally, they, they are able to incinerate, create combustion by, by altering the frequencies of these metals that will increase oxidation reduction, which will thereby produce the oxidizing agents which will fuel the fire. Now, I don't know what else you guys need me to share with you, but I'm going to go through some more videos and hopefully make this a little bit clearer as I, as I proceed and explain these things to you, because this is creepy stuff. This bypasses the need for lasers or any directed energy weapons. These, in this instance, what I'm proposing here is that we have the directed energy weapons right here, and all they needed to do was turn up the, the juice just enough, you know, and uh, that would account for why the entire building's the entire building, the entire content of the material would go up in flames. Let's see, I think I found this. Uh, yeah, as the field strength increases beyond the minimum value, typically so does the wave characteristic, changing from non-steady to steady. This kind of change in wave behavior also results in changes in the microstructure of the product, of the entire product. The reaction occurs simultaneously over the entire volume of the compact which would explain, and it takes very little time, it takes literally like minutes to, to incinerate things. It's called a self-propagating high temperature synthesis where reactions are initial, initially local followed by wave propagation. Anyway, there's, this has been going on for several decades. The combustion synthesis of materials has evolved into many variations. Um, and I'll go through this a little bit deeper and maybe bring you guys a little bit more uh, clearer explanation, but it's it's you have to apply a field electric fields during combustion synthesis, which allows for wave propagation. This would explain the winds. This would explain how we can have all these all this intense burning in in over the entire house, but why the trees wouldn't burn too. So I'm going to keep researching this, and I'll bring you guys uh, my findings as I go through.